hello everyone this is amrinder from uh, cisco telepresence apac team so uh, today in this session uh, we we are going to talk about tms what is tms is what's the role of it how do we install it uh, how, how does it work and how how do we troubleshoot any issues related to tms installations upgrades uh, integration to different uh, products so let me share the presentation i hope you guys can see my screen yes yes sir yeah okay yeah all right all right so talking about tms what's the, the agenda that we have today is uh, uh, a little bit of discussion about uh, what environment do we require for tms to work uh, what type of installations do we have in tms what are the features what are the extensions uh, we will we'll talk about the integration uh, how do we integrate this product to different uh, different telepresence products that we have in our portfolio example endpoints uh expressways our bridges that we have uh it, it could be mcu or telepresence server could be conductor or cms how do we integrate it with the next we we're going to discuss about that as well uh for the topics i think we'll be covering it tomorrow so what's the role of tms first we need to understand this part so that things get clear what exactly is tms Right. So, if, if we talk about our telepresence portfolio, we we have so many products. Uh, we have our endpoints. So we have our endpoints. We we have expressways. We have MCU. CPS. TMS. We may have WebEx integration also. We have so many products now. to to handle all of these products to to keep an eye on all of these devices to make sure all of these devices are up and running we need a software or any kind of application or any kind of a server that can ensure that these products or these infrastructure units are in place and they are up and running if anything or any product goes down we need a device that should inform at least the administrator that okay this endpoint or maybe 10 endpoints or 100 endpoints have gone down yeah so for that purpose for that monitoring purpose we have this application called tms yeah that is one of the role that we have which tms solves so tms is nothing but an application which takes care of monitoring these devices i think my writing would be bad here let me just type it in So the first goal is monitoring. Yeah. The second role that that TMS does is it it manages all of these devices also. So if you need to manage these devices, if you want to perform upgrades on these units on endpoints specifically, uh, if you want to send any sort of configurations to endpoints, all of that management role can be taken care by TMS. Now if if product goes down any endpoint is is not reachable express has gone down it's not reachable you need any some sort of uh, email or some sort of alert mechanism that can inform administrator that okay this has gone down you need to work on it so that that email management is also taken care by tms so on tms we have option wherein you can define a certain email address you can define what type of alerts do you want to enable for certain users so if, if you have a uh, different sort of alerts configured for example if something goes down when there is no http response from certain devices consider that to be a, a priority one and drop an email to xxxyyy users saying that okay this has gone down uh, similarly Ten endpoints lost registration. It could be a medium kind of a priority to to take care of. Uh, for that, maybe there's a different email alias, or the title would be different. 
So all of that it can be taken care by TMS. Uh, one of the important thing that TMS does is is phone book management, which it, it's still taking care of now. So even we have CUCM that manage our endpoint. We have other devices that can do it, but uh, phone book is something which which most of the customers are still using with with TMS. So phone book management is also taken care by this product. Apart from this, uh, integration to WebEx. Uh, so very important role of this is bookings. Now we have we have these devices in place. If we have to make calls between these, you have option to just manually dial in. But if you have to uh, schedule certain conferences, the way we schedule meetings with our managers, with our CEO, uh, we, we require certain mechanism wherein we can schedule these conferences. We can schedule a time so that the meeting starts uh, and, and ends at the given time. So that can also be taken care by TMS. Now, this booking can be done from TMS. It can further integrate to other products that can help us to do the bookings also. For example, this TMS can be integrated to Outlook. Your, your laptop have Outlook client installed. You can integrate your TMS to Outlook as well. We will be discussing this later on, but that's one of the feature available where which can let you choose certain endpoints on your Outlook page. You can choose those, select those endpoints, choose a time, uh, when you save this, this information is, is sent to TMS and TMS books the meeting for you. Okay, so these are some of the options or some of the features which TMS supports. Uh, apart from that, uh, we have provisioning. It could be provisioning as a service which we have on endpoints within uh, TMS or CUCM takes care of pushing the configurations to, to the device. Uh, provisioning is also another service which we have on TMS, which helps user to, to log in over Jabber. So right now we guys use Jabber, Cisco Jabber. We used to have an application in past called Jabber Movie. This, this was an application which let user log in uh, via Expressway to, to their, their Jabber client systems. So in past, Jabber Movie was an application which in Tanberg time used to be a soft client for, for Tanberg soft, as a software. Okay, so later on Cisco came up with Cisco Jabber, but this was the, the application we had in past. And that was uh, only and only possible with the help of TMS. This is end of support now. So yeah, we won't be discussing this in much detail, but yeah, this is this was one of the feature we had in TMS. All right, so yeah, this is uh, the, the basics of what TMS is. What I mean, what are the features it supports? Why do we, uh, uh, why did we uh, introduce TMS in in our telepresence portfolio? The, these are some of the features, and yeah, these are the main features why we introduced it. So coming back to our APT, so there are some prerequisites I would like you guys to set up. We would need a Windows server, basically a couple of Windows servers. You you require uh, Active Directory. You need to have a domain configured yourself. You need to have a DNS in place. Uh, we will require SQL server, and then we will install TMS on top of it. This these are the mandatory thing you need to have this. And once you have this installed only, then you can install TMS. Later on, we would require integration to other products. So you will have, you need to have one of these also. So you need to have at least one endpoint, probably a VCS, CMS, uh, that will help you to set up your lab correctly. Okay, so I'll, I'll, by the end of this, this session, I'll be posting uh, what all things you would require in lab. So I would request you guys to please, please do so. All right, so yeah, this is a small example of how we set up our, our TMS. So you require, require to have a domain controller. I set up a marinc.lab, you will have your own. You require to have an exchange server set up as well. 
so i'm sure you guys are aware what is an exchange server so you have outlook so i have my outlook installed here when i send an email or when i receive an email there is a backend server which takes care of sending and receiving those emails there is a backend server which takes care of all the bookings that i have in my account okay so all of this data it's not stored locally on my system it's not just stored locally on my system it's also stored somewhere on the network on a on a server which takes care of sending and receiving those emails right so that server is is nothing but your exchange server you could have exchange server on premise in past we used to have this in cisco as well later on we moved to o365 so basically it's a subscription based model wherein microsoft provide us uh, on cloud uh, exchange services so we we no longer require uh, exchange install on premise but the mechanism is same the apis are same so you you in your lab you would require to set up an exchange server before you install tms you require to have a sql server in place as well o365 yeah it won't be possible for you guys but yeah if you have an exchange server in place it's a replacement for o365 you should be able to achieve all that you require in tms lab to set up okay okay talking about the the deployment types that we have this will be an overall architecture what all things you would have in 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 a tms setup so you will see a lot of things yeah but yeah this this is how it is so you will have a domain controller in a, if it is a large deployment in customer site it will be a domain controller with multiple in, in cluster with multiple servers there will be exchange server they be, they'll have a sql server installed and in basically sql server will be in a cluster as well so that if one server goes down and the takes over why do we need sql why do we need domain uh, controller and all i'll be discussing that later on but this is an architecture how how you set up your your tms as as a whole so you you will have some bridges in place here mcus conductors or maybe if it's a new deployment customer may have only cms in place then expressways we'll have a ucm as well that will be our call control this will be a kind of setup you'll have uh, further some people might be booking webex meetings using tms so they'll have an integration to webex as well from the same tms application so we we discussed this already so all of this will be taken care by tms so yeah you require domain service but basically you need to set up your active directory set up a domain uh, set up a dns server uh active directory certificate so you may or may not require uh, to set up your ca right now if you ha already have set up that's good otherwise even if you have a self signed certificate on tms it will still work with with the deployment so certificates would not be mandatory but yeah you need to have your dns in place and you need to have your active directory set up those those, those will be the mandatory things to have in place uh any question guys so far no questions okay we'll move forward so let's get into a